Hi students, in this session we will discuss about avalanche photodiode. And in the previous sessions we have discussed about pin photodiode. And the main limitation of the pin photodiode is that in this case there is uh, no internal gain because um, if one photon incident on the pin diode then it will produce only one electron hole pair. So there is no chance of internal gain. Also we have to use other devices or external devices in order to provide internal gain. But this limitation of pin diode is overcome in the case of avalanche photodiode that means APD. So let us go to the avalanche photodiode. First we will discuss about the construction of the avalanche photodiode. See this is the basic structure of the avalanche photodiode and here it consists of a Basically, avalanche photodiode is a p-n junction and it consists of n and p regions and here there are three layers of p regions. See, this is the n region and this is the p region and there are three layers of p region. One is p region, other is an intrinsic layer, its doping is very less and another is a heavily doped p region that is p plus region and the n region is also heavily doped, it is a thin region. See. Here, uh, this diode is also reverse biased. You can see that positive terminal is connected to N region and negative terminal is connected to P region and there is a load resistance. See? So, the avalanche photodiode is a reverse biased PN junction diode and the N plus region is a thin N plus layer and there are three P type layers of different doping levels. And these are situating next to the N plus layer and first layer is a thin P type layer and second is a thick and lightly doped P type layer and it act as an intrinsic layer and the third layer is, uh, third layer is heavily doped P layer. You can see it in the figure and you can see the intrinsic region is a thick layer and the doping concentration of this layer is very small so it absolutely act as an intrinsic material. So that is why we are giving the name intrinsic layer and you can see the electric field distribution in the case of this avalanche photodiode and here you can see that at the n plus p junction the electric field is maximum since it is a reverse biased junction so the depletion region is maximum in the case of n plus p p junction so the electric field between this junction will be higher so the electric field is maximum at this region and it reduces as we go move away from this junction that means it reduces like this and in the intrinsic layer the electric field is constant throughout and suddenly in the in this junction between the intrinsic and the p plus uh, junction the electric field is reduced to zero so we can explain the working of the avalanche photodiode and under first we, uh, we will discuss about the no bias condition under no bias condition the depletion layer does not extend across the intrinsic layer and the diode is reverse biased uh, then to increase the field in the depletion layer see if we are not applying any bias here then the, there will be depletion layer between the n and the p region but that depletion layer will not extend to this intrinsic region under no bias condition since these all are p type materials there will be no depletion uh, there is no extension of depletion layer into this region if we are not applying any bias and in order to increase the electric field within this within the depletion region we are applying a reverse bias that means we are increasing the bias then what will happen when we are increasing the depletion region when we are increasing the electric field or when we are increasing the bias reverse bias of this avalanche photodiode if a sufficient reverse bias is applied, then the depletion region in the P layer widens to reach, reach through to the intrinsic layer and hence it is named as a reach through avalanche photodiode. Suppose if there is no bias, then there will be depletion layer in between uh, uh, this N plus and P, P layer. That means in this junction, there will be depletion layer formed. And if we are applying a negative bias, then that depletion layer width will be increases beyond this p region so that depletion layer will increases to this intrinsic layer also and this effect is known as reach throw effect in the case of avalanche photodiode that means if a sufficient 
reverse bias is applied to the depletion layer in the p dep uh, the reverse bias is applied the depletion layer in the p layer widens to the reach through to the intrinsic layer and hence it is named as a reach through avalanche photodiode or reach through apd and the electric field distribution is shown in the diagram and we have discussed it and that means field maxima is at n plus p junction and it decreases slowly in the p layer and uh, the uniform field is in the uh, field in the intrinsic layer and the field will vanishes or depletion layer will vanishes in the junction between intrinsic layer and p plus layer so in the case of avalanche photo actually it is a photo dictator that means light will be detected and it will be converted into current in the case of avalanche in the case of detectors a photo detector what is the function of photo detector it will convert the light into electric current so in the case of avalanche photodiode the main cause of photo current at the output of the avalanche photodiode is due to impact ionization and avalanche effect so uh, the major causes of the photo current in the avalanche photodiode is due to two processes first one is impact ionization and the second one is the avalanche effect so we can go to the impact ionization in the avalanche photodiode the incident photon produces electron hole pairs in the intrinsic layer you can see see here we are applying a uh, light energy here and that light energy will be absorbed in this intrinsic layer and when this intrinsic layer absorbs this light energy there is a generation of electron and hole pairs in this intrinsic layer and this electron and hole will move to other layers such as p plus layer and p layer in the presence of this electric field so the incident photon will produces electron hole pairs in the intrinsic layer and these electrons drift towards n plus layer and holes drift towards p plus layer you can see that uh, the electrons will go to a direction of positive terminal of the battery and the holes will move to the direction of negative terminal of the battery that is why electrons are moved, drifted to uh, to n plus layer and the holes are drifted to p plus layer that you can see clearly from the diagram and when the electron reaches the p layer in order to move to move the electrons from intrinsic layer to n plus layer it have to pass through the p layer in between this intrinsic layer and n plus layer so when the electron reaches the p layer the field within the device due to large reverse bias accelerates these electrons and these electrons gains sufficient kinetic energy and this will collide with the bounded electrons in the valence band and create a secondary electron hole pairs and this process is called impact ionization you can see here in the diagram when the light energy we are when we are illuminating this avalanche photodiode with this light of energy h nu that will be that light will be absorbed in the intrinsic layer and due to the absorption it will produces electron hole pairs and electrons will move to the positive terminal and the holes will move to this negative terminal and when uh, electrons uh, the movement is uh, in the uh, in the presence of electric field so we can uh, say it is a drift of electrons from the intrinsic layer to n plus layer so when the electron from the intrinsic layer drift towards n plus layer when it reaches the p layer it may gain sufficient energy due to this uh, due to this uh, due to this electric field so this electron's kinetic energy will be increased and those electrons will collide with the other atoms in the p layer and it will produce a secondary electron hole pairs so again in the p layer there will be electron hole um, pair production will occur so this process is called impact ionization due to impact ionization newer electron hole pairs will be produced in the p layer okay and if the field created is very high that means if the reverse bias is very high then the field within the junctions of n plus p layer will also be very high so the secondary electron hole pairs produced due to impact ionization in the p layer will create new electron hole pairs by another impact ionization so this process will continues and this is like a chain action and this chain multiplication leads to avalanche of the impact ionization process so once these electron hole pairs reach the uh, reach here impact ionization produces newer electron hole pairs that means the secondary electron hole pairs will be produced so this electron hole pairs is situating in the presence of high electric field due to this reverse bias 
and these electrons will collide with other bounded electrons uh, other bounded uh, atoms as a result it will produce newer electron hole pairs and this newer electron hole pairs again hit to other bounded atoms so this process uh, occurs as a chain reaction so this results into the avalanche of Im impact ionization that is avalanche effect so due to this avalanche effect high photochiron will be produced so one so we can say that one electron entering in the p layer can generate more number of electron hole pairs and this results in multiplied photocurrent so this diode possess internal gain mechanism so photo generation takes place in the intrinsic region and avalanche multiplication takes place in the p region you can see here that here first this photon will be absorbed in this intrinsic region and as a result electron hole pair produced here so a photocurrent will be produced and that electron hole pair will move to this p region again the electron hole pair generation will um, takes place due to the impact ionization and again when we are increasing the reverse bias this electron hole pair generation um, increases as a chain reaction so avalanche process takes place in the p region so we can say that the avalanche multiplication factor m of an avalanche photodiode is defined as a multiple multiplied output photocurrent divided by initial or primary unmultiplied photocurrent so we can write it as i output divided by i photo and similarly this can be again written as m is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus v in divided by vbr all raised to n where vbr is the avalanche breakdown voltage and v in is the reverse biased voltage and n is the characteristic index so next we can go to the advantages and disadvantages of this avalanche photodiode and the main advantages are it is highly sensitive and its sensitivity is very high and here external amplification mechanism is not required as as in the case of uh, pin photodiode um, because the um, amplification process takes place inside the avalanche photodiode itself due to the avalanche multiplication process and the disadvantages are the fabrication cost of this avalanche photodiode is high due to the complex structure and due to fluctuations in the carrier generation excess noise is found in the avalanche multiplied photocurrent and a high bias voltage or a negative voltage will be required in the range of 50 to 400 volt and the temperature compensation is necessary for stable operation sometimes when chain reaction takes place the temperature may rise so temperature compensation technique has to be used for stable operation next is the main sources of noise in the case of detectors uh, that means uh, this type of noises will appear um, in the case of receivers and most important noises are short noise thermal noise and dark current noise these are the three noises occur in the case of detectors and short noises arises due to the fluctuations in the electric current because we know that electric current is due, um, is, uh, due to the flow of the electrons uh, if the electric current is due to randomly generated electrons then this causes the short noise in the case of a photo detector it produces the current when it is illuminated by a constant optical power and uh, here the current is due to the randomly generated electron hole pair therefore the current will fluctuate randomly around the average value and that average value will be determined by the average optical power incident on the photo detector and uh, the short noise current uh, is random so its average value will be zero and uh, the mean square value of the short noise is given by isn square equal to 2 e ip into b where isn is the short noise current and i is the uh, ip is the average current generated by the detector and b is the receiver bandwidth next is the dark current noise see when there is no incident optical power in the case of avalanche photodiode even then there all photo detectors is like a pin photodiode or avalanche photodiode generate some current id and this current is called a dark current and actually this dark current is arises from the thermally generated carriers and so this is known as dark current and a dark current noise is given by the expression actually its mean square value is given that is id square will be equal to 2 e into b into id where id is the dark current and e is the electron charge and its value is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 and next is the thermal noise it is also known as nyquist noise or johnson noise it arises due to the thermal motion of electrons in the load resistor of the photodiode circuit 
since the electron motion is random the average value of this current is zero so thermal noise is produced due to the movement of the electrons in the load resistor connected to the external circuit see you can see here that here there is a load resistor connected in the avalanche photodiode and the thermal motion of the electrons in this load resistor causes the thermal noise so mean square value of the thermal noise is given by i t n square equal to 4 k b into t b divided by R L and K B is the Boltzmann's constant. Its value is 1.38 into 10 raised to minus 23 joule per Kelvin and T B is the temperature in Kelvin. So that's all about this session. Thank you.